Hello world, today we'll be scanning all the IP addresses on our home Wi-Fi network and detecting when a new IP is added. I owe a lot of credit to Tucknakamit1 for his Python who is on my Wi-Fi library and I'll post a link to his GitHub project in the description of this video below. Before we check it out, welcome to the 123rd video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. One of the key capabilities of Shane will be to provide cybersecurity and help defend against attackers. So uh, let's check out uh, the program and how it works. And so first, uh, my, my iPhone is currently off the Wi-Fi network. Uh, my home Wi-Fi network and so um, we'll do an initial scan and assume that all of them are friendly IPs and then I'll be prompted in the code on print statements that I put in myself to turn my iPhone back on the Wi-Fi and then we'll scan again and detect the new IP so let's check it out so let me run this And so it is currently getting the IP addresses of everything. And now it's telling me to turn on my iPhone to Wi-Fi. And then it's waiting 10 seconds. And then it's going to say scanning. All right. And then it should detect the new IP address. So we have two new IP addresses. Uh, I think this is my son's something, but anyways, this is my iPhone. All right, and so it'll keep looping through the scannings to tell me that these new IP addresses are connected to my Wi-Fi every 10 seconds. So that's pretty good. And uh, let's check it out. Now, I won't in when I assign this to my digital assistant, you know, I'll take out these print statements uh, and it will just scan itself. So let's go through the code. So the biggest thing is I found this GitHub for this library called Python, who is on my Wi-Fi and this GitHub. And what I did was I went into the source file. And what he did in this um, code is if it's Windows or if it's Linux or if it's Darwin, the operating systems, then this code works on all of those. And what I did was I extracted all of that information out and just used the Windows only code. So if we go down to the main part, the first thing that it does is uh, prints out to the uh, user the credits and all that and the license. So make sure you see that text right there. Um, again, all credit is to this person. Um, so then it goes into this right here, this wrapper. Then it does a parser. Go to his GitHub and I'll put the link in my description. And then it calls this um, function called device and then it functions this thing who so I did something so I went into the actual device um, function that he created and uh, here it is and then he finds the platform that you're using so I just took the Windows portion of it and extracted that into this code so what it does is it gets all the device information right and then it uses subprocess it uses socket it uses WMI which is the Windows installer package it uses get Mac to get a Mac address it uses socket subprocess and all of that is just to get your um, information for the device you're using and how to get vendor information it'll use later. And then it handles all the string information in this code. And so it reduce, it returns this device list right here, which gives you 
the name, the product name, the MAC address, the IP host, hostname, all of the information for your computer, even your password, which was crazy. I didn't know it could do that. So uh, get your, get, go to his GitHub, uh, give him the credit. So then I do an initial scan. So what we do is I created my own known IP list. Okay, and then what he does is he uses the device information that we just went over to run this who function. Okay, so in this who function under Windows, it calls the device that we just went over. And then it starts extracting the information from this device list. So my IP, so 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is getting the fourth index right here, the device, and it returns all that information. And then it uses Nmap. So we import Nmap up here. So we import Nmap and we do an actual scan. And what it does is it takes the my IP, adds the dash 24, that way it looks for all of them between 1 and 24. Then it creates a dictionary using nm, which is this port scanner, dot scan. And it scans for the host, which we assigned right here. The arguments, it, this is more handling of the information. And then it gives us this uh, dictionary right here, this get from the scan. And then if we wanted to print the your device list, it would give you all the information on your device. But I just need for each IP in the scan. Now in his code, he gets the vendor from it, which is awesome. And the MAC address and appends it to this who list. This is part of the original code. I just want the IP address. So for each IP in this scan, this Nmap scanner, I append the IP to this known IP list. Then I make a list out of this because what this is right now is a dictionary. So if I were to print this, if I were to take out this list and this part right here, this one to negative one, which is this is one right here, the first bracket, negative one is the second bracket, you get a dictionary. And when I actually use the code, I can't use dictionaries. So I make it a list and I remove the brackets. And then I return the known IP list. Okay, the scan is very similar, except I'm just scanning the IP, then I'm just adding the new IP addresses to a scan IP list instead of known IP list. And as you can see in PyCharm, if you have an unused variable, it's grayed out. And I don't use any of these variables in this. Same thing, the Nmap port scanner method, using the my IP, the same thing. But for each IP in the scan, we're going to add it to the scan IP list. Then we're going to make it an official list, remove the brackets, and return that scan IP list. So those are the two functions that I extracted from this GitHub. Now, this GitHub for who is on my Wi-Fi is much more than I actually need. And so I'll probably remove a lot of this, but uh, what a great starting off point. So then what I do is I take my known IP list, right? I create a variable and then I get it from the initial scan. And then I create a variable called set. And then it equals a set, which is a known IP list. Then I set a variable that says scan Wi-Fi equals true. So while scan Wi-Fi, which is the same thing as saying while this is true, we're going to print turn on iPhone, right? So it does a scan. And in that scan, we have a known IP list and we have a set. Then I tell myself to turn on my iPhone and that's for you, the audience, so you can see what this is doing. In actual application, I will have much change. I'll have a lot of changes. For one, I'm going to create my own dictionary or um, list of known IPs. Right? These are the IPs that I've analyzed and determined are friendly IPs on my Wi-Fi network. So I won't use this initial scan. So I'll create a set from that. Then we sleep for 10 seconds, and that's just so I can turn on my iPhone 
and talk to you at the same time. Then we print scanning and then it runs another scan, right? Using the scan method or um, scan function. So now when it does that and I have my iPhone on or somebody comes onto my Wi-Fi that maybe I don't want, it will catch it during this second scan. Then I create a set and the reason why I create a set is so I can use this dot difference method. So you can't use this for lists, right? You have to do it between two sets. So a new IP list equals this scan IP list set, that's this one right here, dot difference of this known IP list. Now this requires you to understand your order of operations, right? If I put known IP list dot difference of the scan IP list, it would never tell me there's a difference because the known IP list, because you're looking for the difference in the scan IP list. We want the difference that's in the known IP list. So just, uh, I probably didn't explain that clear enough and I apologize, but if you're ever using a set dot difference and you're not getting the result you assume, try switching the two sets and maybe your order of operations is backwards. And then for each new IP in the new IP list, which is here, we're going to print IP so-and-so has connected to your Wi-Fi. And you saw that with the two different Wi-Fi's. And then that's the end of the code because if there's no new IPs, it'll just keep resetting. So I will keep the um, how much time in between each scans to myself for security purposes once Shane goes live and it's a real uh, application in my household. The known IP list will be my own list that I create. Um, to analyze my own IP addresses. I use a uh, iPhone app called Fing and it gives a lot of good information similar to what this who's on my I, uh, Wi-Fi is. All right, so like all good programmers, I did a lot of copy and pasting. However, this is all my own code and I do give all credit to this user right here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope that this person's GitHub project is valuable to you. And uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to keep seeing me build my cyber security capabilities of Shane. Or if you want to watch me build Shane itself. Uh, leave a comment if you know of a simpler way to do this. Maybe I'm, I made this way more complicated than it needs to. Now I do understand I have quite a bit of information that I'm not using. And I do want to keep that in there for now just to give me options in the future. Um, you'll see this pretty print in here. If you don't know what pretty print is, you import PP print or P print. And what that does is it creates um, a dictionary, a key value dictionary. And with indent for, sorry, let me scroll to it right here. You do PP equals PP, P print dot capital pretty printer indent four, and it makes the dictionary printout right. So I wanted to see what was in the, uh, before I added the known IP list, I wanted to just see what this who list is, and it gives you all this information in a nice orderly math method. So please like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.